This is the 20 Minutes of Influence podcast with your host, Greg Jameson. Influencer marketing is the process of identifying, researching, engaging, and supporting the people who create high-impact conversations with your customers. On each episode, I talk with industry leaders, business rock stars, and internet celebrities who contribute their knowledge about influencing others and growing your influence. Welcome to the 20 Minutes of Influence podcast. I'm your host, Greg Jamison. With me today is Gert Garman. She's coming to us from Orlando, Florida. And Gert runs a company called Broad Perspective. Uh, She helps people with uh, creativity and innovation uh, by training them on those things. And obviously, every business needs to be creative and be innovative. So I'm going to let Gert say a few more things about herself here. Welcome to the show, Gert. Thanks, Greg. I appreciate it. Hi, everybody. Um, Yeah, so I I used to work at Disney. um, And so that's who kind of trained me in this innovation training. And so a lot of the attractions that you go on if you visit any of our parks, chances are somebody, um, either myself or someone on our our team, helped um, them do the creative session in order to get the experience built. So um, other than that, I've also worked with Lucasfilms. I worked on the last two Star Wars movies, which was really cool. Um, I've worked with the FBI. I've worked with lots of nonprofits, higher ed. So it doesn't really matter what the industry or the company is. Everybody's got challenges and everyone needs to create a strategic plan. And that's where I come in. I can do facilitation, like customized, uh, a, a customized facilitation uh, to create a session that will get them to success. Um, Or I can also come in and train them and give them a new skill set and the tools they need to be innovative moving forward. So it's it's really fun work. Um, Most people don't think they're creative. So I love to inspire people because everyone is creative. You just need to be properly inspired. Yeah, and quite honestly, I I totally agree. I think everybody is creative. Uh, I'm at the other end of the uh, spectrum, I guess, and the I do think I'm creative. <laughs> oh, that's okay. That's good. That's a jump start. But cre- creativity, w- what I think a lot of people don't understand, at least from my perspective, is that it's really about taking ideas from a bunch of different places and assimilating them into a new idea. Yeah, that's right. That's and right. And Yeah, the- and getting insights too. Also knowing really the needs of the customer too because you can't just make assumptions of what you think they need so it's marrying that with the collaboration of all the ideas and then again creating that new solution yeah yeah so a lot of people i suspect the reason why they don't think they're creative is because creativity to many people seems to be something that where they think of oh i need to be an artist of some kind uh, correct I also, yeah i always tell people listen it you don't have to have a glue gun in order to do this okay so you know you just need to have the right tools and the right actually just kind of the right mindset you know to be positive minded a bit you know and to listen to other people because if greg if it was you and i and i'm pitching an idea to you and you say well yes and what about this and you add to the idea and it makes it even more robust well how great is that right? But I need to be open to your addition to my idea. Yeah. So uh, this is a great topic here. What uh, do you do to really help bring out creativity in people? So there's a process. I'm I'm certified in like five different processes. So depending on what the needs, um, the breadth and the scope of what the client needs, then I will customize uh, a facilitation in order to use different tools and techniques and um, different processes in order to get them there. But I do it by interactivity, like they have to interact well together. There's some agreements that we have to start this session with, so everybody needs to kind of play well together for the day. You know, um, they need to be able to listen to each other. I do some improv stuff in there. Not, Not long, but just enough to get them in a lateral mindset instead of so linear. 
Um, and it's interesting because I work sometimes, um, I, I teach a class at our local community college to first responders. And nobody thinks more linearly than they do because they have to, right? They're saving lives. But, um, but in, in order to just get them out here in an alpha brain state, in order for them to be able to come up with fresh ideas. Okay, so the companies that you mentioned here, Disney and uh, Lucasfilms and so forth, obviously those are companies that people associate with being uh, very creative and innovative. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in, in fact, uh, you know, people go to the Disney theme parks clearly because they want that experience of, of being creative and or having this uh, all this creativity around them. It's uh, I, I think most people think that a, a Disney property is something that someone inside of Disney came up with. Uh, or are you saying that you help the people inside of Disney come up with these ideas or uh, you actually come up with the ideas and they implement them? How does that work? No, no, no. I don't come up with the ideas. I just facilitate it because they won't have ownership. If I come up with the ideas, they have to be their ideas. I just help lead them down the path in order for them to collaborate together. Because what happens is, if it's just the marketing people coming up with ideas to implement in the park, the operations people are gonna be like, what, we're not doing that. So you have to have the operations people in the creative session with the marketing people, and they do it together. Because you, one of the rules I use is, you don't say no. If you can't, if we can't do something that marketing is suggesting, then what can we do? And then let's play with that and let's build on that. So, you know, we really just, we try to teach like that, that improv first rule of saying yes and, and building on each other's stuff. So, you know, it just, it really makes it a much more pleasant experience. But then at the end, it's everyone's ideas and they all own them and they're proud of them and they want to bring them to life. Okay. So uh, if I've got a company and I'm thinking that my company is not very innovative or creative. Uh, what can I do, uh, aside obviously from getting in touch with you and hiring you, um, right. but what can I do to uh, really start to make my company be uh, more creative? So for, if that's the challenge, then I would say bring me in. And what I would do is do an innovation training with them. So not a creative session, but actually teaching them the, the tools, the skill set, the behaviors, and the process itself in order for them to be more innovative. Because um, there's lots of really cool tools that you can use in order to get unstuck. So, but it's a matter of having those in your back pocket. And if you don't know them, you know, you, you, I can teach them to, to you, but then you have to practice them. Because it's like any other skill set. If you don't practice it, you lose it. So. Okay. If, as you've worked with companies, uh, what kind of challenges have you seen in, with uh, getting people to buy into your ideas? For the most part, they do buy into my ideas. Um, it's just a matter of having the right people in the room, right? Um, having management behind it. Um, but also just making sure that you set the environment right. So don't put them in the same conference room where they have their Monday meetings, right? Like get a fresh place to have a, a training or a creative session. So somewhere that's going to help them think a little differently just from the beginning. And you're signaling to them, this is going to be different. So, and, you know, it's just a matter of setting, setting the, um, setting the, the scene for them and then taking them through it, but to the point where they're engaged, right? Because it's not a matter of me talking at them. What I do is take them through it. It's interactive. I, I um, teach the tool. I teach the piece of the process, but then they practice it right there because you have to land the learnings. And so um, generally I, I've really never had anybody not grab onto it because it's so different and yet it's fun. So it's kind of like, you know, playing with purpose a bit. Okay. 
And, you know, maybe what companies need to do is play more in general. <laughs> you said, they more. do. <laughs> yes, they do. So uh, one of the things that I talk a with a lot on this show is about experts and influencers and people, you know, individuals that are out there uh, really making an impact for mm -hmm. others. And when you're working with yourself, what kinds of uh, tools, I guess, would people need and maybe what kind of obstacles do they need to overcome when they're an individual trying to go out there and really provide some creative content for people? So I would say, um, and I'm speaking for me as well, because I have to do this because I work by myself, but um, having conversations with people, having conversations with people who are very different than you. Um, I travel a lot because I'm also um, a keynote speaker on this topic. And um, so I talk to everybody because I'm by myself, you know, for the most part. So I have conversations with people and I'll just tell you this really quick story. I was doing a keynote a couple years ago in Maui. Um, you know, which wasn't awful. And so on the way back, I had a, um, I had a layover in LA. So I usually sit in Comfort Plus, I fly Delta. And um, so really nice guy by the window. Nobody was in the middle seat yet. I'm in the aisle seat. And I was like, maybe we'll get lucky. And somebody didn't upgrade. And he's like, girl, please. And here comes this lady and she sits down. And we've got this four hour flight from Maui to LA. She sits down and she strikes up a conversation with him. And she just said, what do you do for a living? And he said, well, I'm a writer. And she goes, oh, I'm a literary agent. And she had just signed a contract with Stan Lee from Marvel Comics to write his memoirs. But she's like, but I'm not a writer. I need a writer to team up with me. Those two had the most fascinating conversation for four hours. And by the time we landed at LAX, they had signed a contract to work together. Now, had he not been open to that unplanned collaboration, he never would have gotten that piece of business that probably changed his life. I have heard so, of so many people that actually do business on airplanes. People think that golf courses are the place to do business. Uh, the problem with golf courses is you're usually playing with people you already know. Right. You're, and you're sitting next to somebody you don't know. Yeah. Yeah, and I have the most fascinating conversations. I carry the same book that I've carried forever, Greg. It's a prop. It's just to like get people comfortable around me and then I pounce. I read it 10 years ago. So, you know, but it's it's cool because again, you never know who you're going to meet and you have the most like interesting conversations. I have a really good friend and she she always says be open to the encounters. So, I love that. So that's how I go out and get sparked and get, you know, um, inspiration um, for new ideas and for content. I also listen to other people's podcasts. I do my own podcast. Um, but it's really kind of just, you know, also going out and observing people because, you know, at the airport, that's the best people watching in the world. So, you know, kind of fun. But yeah, I mean, you just learn new things. Awesome. Well, we need to take a quick break here. On the other side of the break, let's actually go a little bit deeper into this whole idea here of how you can observe people and not, not just observe them, but I guess uh, meet people to really kind of kickstart the whole uh, creative process for you. Okay. So we'll be right back after this. Hi, I'm Greg Jamison, the host of the 20 Minutes of Influence podcast. Every week, I not only have the opportunity, but the real privilege of interviewing experts in their field, true thought leaders, and I get to share this information with you. The purpose of this is really to help you sell more of your products and services online, which is the core premise of my primary business, Web Stores Limited. At Web Stores, we go out and we create e-commerce websites for small businesses. Plus, we do internet marketing and digital advertising for those businesses to really help them sell more online. We have a whole number of resources and tools designed to help make this process easier for businesses, probably much like yours. 
I've been the author of several number one best-selling books, including Amazon's Dirty Little Secrets and The Influencer Effect, plus a whole series of online courses if you want to learn how to do this stuff yourself. The best way to remain in contact with me, besides subscribing to this podcast, of course, is to simply go to gregjamison.com forward slash free gift, where I have a special offer for you simply because you are a valued listener to this podcast. Thanks again. And now let's get back to today's episode. Welcome back to the 20 Minutes of Influence podcast. I'm Greg Jamison, and with me today is Gert Garman of Broad Perspective. And right before the break, Gert and I were talking about the whole idea of kind of going out of your way to meet interesting people as a way of stimulating the creative process. So what other uh, suggestions do you have, Gert, on really accomplishing that goal? So a couple of cool tools that I like to teach are, um, one is like, if you know what your target market is, so say it's 18 to 24 year olds. Okay. So maybe you own a movie theater. Okay. It's 18 to 24 year olds. Okay, great. So if you wanted to learn more about them, I'm in my fifties, so I would definitely need to do some homework. Um, we, we do this thing where you go out and you say, okay, I'm going to be them. All right. So I'm going to go hang out at a club or somewhere, even if it's just for a little bit, and I'm going to pretend I'm them. Or maybe I'll go and sit on a college campus, right? Sit in the student center and just kind of observe people, listen to what they're talking about. What are they doing? What are they wearing? That kind of stuff. So that's um, being them. Okay. Another one is about them. So what if um, I go and I talk to some college professors or I talk to a coach or I talk to people you know, at like a preacher at a church where he's got quite a congregation of that age group. Um, and I just ask questions about them to, to get some knowledge on them, right? And then the third one is with them. So I mentor a lot of college students. And so what I like to do is, you know, just kind of hang out with them, right? And, and be with them. So, you know, ask them questions, see what they're talking about. What is it that they want to talk about? Um, and what kind of challenges are they facing and then you learn all these insights about it so that's a cool tool that we use it's called the who box and so you you figure out who it is that you kind of want to um do homework for and then you go and do your homework okay and bring back all kinds of um insights that you saw um another one i use in creative sessions and i love this tool it's one of my favorites but say you have a challenge okay so, okay, I'll give you a perfect example. There, um, there's a Dar Darden, you know, owns like uh, Olive Garden and Longhorn Steaks. And they have another brand that they own called Bahama Breeze. And it's Caribbean food. And it's mostly kind of in the, the Southeast, but very good food. And so they came to me and I did a creative session for them. And they wanted to come up with four signature events they could roll out throughout the year where... Um, you know, it kind of filled their gap times, right, with customers. And I said, great, okay, so tell me who it is, um, like what is it that you want the, the customers to feel when they come into one of these signature events? They said, well, we want them to feel an escape, and we want them to feel well taken care of and pampered. I was like, okay, so who does that outside of the restaurant industry? And of course, the first answer is a spa, right? And then the second thing I thought of was, what about hospice care? They do those very same things. So I brought in as naive experts into the creative session, um, a lady from the Ritz Carlton spa, and then a lady from a local hospice care place here. And we, um, we had them in the session for an hour. They, we called them naive experts because they really didn't know what we were solving for. But because they accomplished the same thing that we are trying to solve for, we just asked them some questions, right? And got some really cool insights from them that we were able to then build ideas from. And it was great. So like, you know, if you want to do some deep dives, you got to think like them, but go outside of your industry. So like, you know, when I used to do stuff for Disney, I'd be like, okay, outside of the theme park industry, who else does this? And then what might we steal from them? So we call it, the, the tool's called Borrow. And so you think about 
you know, if it's about customer service, who in the world gives great customer service? Okay, Amazon, Apple. All right, how do they do that? Then make a list of how they do it, and then how can you apply some of that stuff back to the challenge that you're facing? Okay, so there's a couple things you said in there that I want to expand upon a little bit here. One is going outside your industry, which I think is obviously something that we, uh, everybody really needs to do if they're going to be creative and innovative. Uh, you mentioned Amazon and Apple, both of which are technology companies and uh, Amazon in particular is involved in e-commerce. Uh, Apple sells stuff online as well. If somebody's got an e-commerce business and they are selling things that are typically available uh, on lots of different e-commerce stores. You know, they may be competing with Amazon. They uh, may be competing with uh, just a whole bunch of other people that are selling similar products. Uh, how can we, uh, right here today uh, via this podcast, how can we stimulate those types of business owners to start thinking more creatively of, you know, how can I actually go out there and make my online store stand out? I would go old school for that one. So like what businesses don't have e-commerce, okay, and yet give amazing service um, or create um, experiential um, situations where customers want to come back and repeat their business with them. So maybe go to a mom and pop shop or maybe go, you know, somewhere else. And then how is it that those businesses are doing that? And then you think, okay, great. I've got these cool ideas now that I've gotten from the mom and pop shop here, this local store. Now, how do I put that online and make that a cooler experience for um, my customers to make me stand out and differentiate myself. So I, I would think about, you just got to get, don't be thinking about what Amazon and Apple are doing. Go somewhere else that's giving a really cool experience. So, and then how, how can you put that online? That's what I would do. Okay. And I think that one of the things that that uh, is saying is that your online store needs to be different than everybody else's online store. You, you don't want to just go out there and grab a Shopify template and throw a bunch of product up there because that's not solving a problem. Right. I mean, it might be solving the problem of, Hey, I've, I've got all this stuff that I want to sell online. But right. And it's, it, and it's not creating it's, that experience. It's not. And if you're, yeah. And think about like, where else do you have an experience? So think about, the Disney's and the Universal's and you know that kind of stuff where things come to life. So then, how might you have that happen online? So maybe they click on a button and you know something comes to life. Or you know, like I I buy a lot of dresses online, you know, just because it's easier. And so, what if I clicked on a dress and instead of it just magnifying so I can see what it looks like, what if someone who looks like me? What if I could put in, okay, so I'm, I'm a curvy, short, you know, older woman. What if I could like pick the model, put her in that dress and see how it looks. And maybe she like swirls around, you know, or whatever. So I can see what that looks like. I mean, that could just be a really cool experience and sell me. Yeah. One of the things that I have actually uh, been involved with here for the last, uh, I don't know, six, 12 months. Uh, is it an augmented reality product. Uh, it's, mm. it's called Revealio. And what you do is you uh, have an image that triggers a video. And, okay. and you, you, you hold up your phone to some image. You know, I've got an image back here and I hold my phone up to it. And all of a sudden, uh, that image starts to become animated and maybe a person appears and talks about the the product and so forth. It's really bringing a still image to life, essentially. And what I have suggested to people is that they go out and 
not just think of that, you know, it was originally designed for greeting cards. You hold up a greeting card and, uh, and now all of a sudden the, the image on the greeting card starts to talk to you. But you could use that same technology in your mom and pop storefront. People walk through there and they see a product, they hold their phone up to it and all of a sudden that product comes to life and starts saying, hey, you know, I could do this for you and that for you type thing. Mm -hmm. So you're right, you kind of have to think outside of the box sometimes. And uh, and I guess that's really the purpose of what we've been talking about today is how yeah. to stimulate your thoughts to think outside of the box. Yeah, and getting, you know, just getting stimulus from other places and talking to people. I mean, I get paid to do the plan collaboration, but that unplanned collaboration is like so valuable because you just never know who you're going to be talking to and how you're going to get inspired by them. So it's really, you know, it's really vital that you have conversations with people. Awesome. So as we wrap up here, uh, what final words of advice would you have for people listening to this podcast in terms of uh, being more creative and innovative within their businesses? Um, it, if it's a management person, here's what I'll tell you. Please listen to the people on your front line. They're the ones who are dealing with your customers. They're the ones who are dealing with your guests. So, and a lot of times they have some of the most innovative ideas, but they don't know how to run them up the flagpole to you, um, nor do they think you're going to listen to them. So um, just a really quick story. And of course it's a Disney story because I have so much experience with them, but Walt Disney used to walk that third shift at Disneyland when he first built it because the executives never talked to those people on the third shift. They came in at midnight, left at eight. And so he would go and walk in the park and talk to them about different things that he thought they might be able to help with to make better for the guest experience. And so he asked people on the front line. I work with a lot of financial institutions and I'm always like, okay, talk to your tellers, talk to your loan officers. They're the ones who are talking to your guests and your customers and your members. So um, that's the first thing. Um, but I think just also be open um, because, you know, don't, as soon as someone starts pitching an idea to you, don't already say in your head, oh my God, this is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Maybe they're just nervous pitching it to you or, you know, maybe you don't understand. So ask questions about it, right? Tell me more about this. Okay. Um, and then just be open to it and, and, and then bring ideas to life too. Like um, a lot of people think very differently when they process thought. So Maybe don't just talk about your idea, maybe draw a picture of it, or maybe build a prototype of it and show that. So there's lots of ways to share creativity and be more collaborative. And that's, that's the big theme I hear across industries is people are like, well, we don't know how to collaborate better together or communicate better together. And they don't because everybody's in their silos. So really open things up and do some cross training and do some you know, some job shadowing. It's really important. Great advice. Uh, really appreciate you being here today with us, Gert. Can you let our listeners know how they can stay in contact with you? Yeah, I have a website. It's broadperspective.net and you can um, send me a love note on there. Um, there's also some good um, tips on there um, and I've got some funny videos. So uh, feel free to browse around there. I also have a podcast on Libsyn. So it's called Broad Perspective. So if you, um, if you go on there, you can listen. Um, I think I've got about 12 episodes on there so far. Um, and then I'm part of a, a women's empowerment podcast every week too with a local radio station here. And it's called Women Who Mix. And you can find that on mix1051.com. So lots of ways to get a hold of me. I'm also on Facebook and LinkedIn. Great. We'll make sure that the link to your website is in the show notes. And appreciate you being here with us. It's, it's been awesome. Thanks, Greg. Enjoy the weather there. Will do. Okay. Thanks for listening to today's episode of 20 Minutes of Influence. If you enjoyed today's podcast, please leave a review on iTunes or wherever you listen to your podcast. And if you are interested in booking myself as a speaker at one of your events or are interested in any of my coaching programs, please visit gregjamison.com.